Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. All right, let's try that again without blowing you guys' ears out. How are y'all doing today? Oh boy, can't wait for that intro. <laughs> Watch that sound. All right. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, this, uh, All right, let's see if we can try this again. Okay, let me know if I'm back with you guys and girls. And we'll see if we can work this out. Okay. <laughs> yeah I'm getting it fixed today has uh, been a testament of my patience and understanding I'm not a drinker but oh man have I said the serenity prayer enough times today to accept the things I cannot change <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, well, hopefully uh, everything um, is going to work out well and we can get uh, on track here. How are you all doing this evening? Hopefully you all are doing very, very well. I, uh, if y'all are... Yeah, Glenn, you're on a live feed. Trust me, you're on a live feed. Uh, how live it will be, uh, I don't know. How long will it stay live without buffering? I don't know. Um, we're going to try our best to uh, get everything running smoothly. I don't know what spectrum is, Brian, but uh, we'll we'll say I do. All right. We're gonna get some uh, buffering here and there. Um, not sure why, but we'll uh we'll try to uh get through it anyway 
Uh, everybody, uh, give a shout out. Say hello if you can hear me. If we're running stream, uh, and then we'll get started. Just got no computer crash where I lost. Uh, no. Uh, okay, Spectrum. No, I don't. Have, I don't know if that's. <laughs> Lively today. We're in Chantilly, Virginia, and we'll get that uh, buffering to stop. Well, I'm getting up my uh, CPU, but I'm going to uh, and see if I can. And that, but I'm gonna instead buffering. I think my spot. Maybe this is God's way of saying that. I can get this to work now. Um. I don't know, something's using 100% of my CPU, and it's not anything that I'm doing. I don't have anything running in the background, so uh, I'm at a little bit of a loss. I don't think there's any updates or anything running that I'm aware of. Let's quit a few things. I know it got a lot better. Uh, let me uh, let me go through and see if I have any background um, operations going on. That's uh, see if I can uh, clean up some processes bear with me guys and girls man this is just eating me up Let me find some processes that are eating up my computer. Bear with me a second. So, um, <laughs> I don't have, I'm at a loss. All right, we're going to see if uh, we can get through this uh, somewhat. And uh, hopefully we can.
Yeah, I know it's time to, it's definitely time to uh, kick somebody off the internet. I don't know. <laughs> they are. It's the dog, somebody. Uh, it's killing me. Um, I'm just hoping that uh, when I crashed my other computer this morning and by spilling liquids all over it, never have sodas, Dr. Pepper, near your computers. I killed a computer today with Dr. Pepper. Um, and now this computer is acting up. All right, so hopefully the uh, things will start to level out. Uh, my CPU has kind of uh, come down a little bit. I closed some background programs that were running. And uh, we'll see what we can do with this. And um, see if we can kind of clean up some processor stuff. Uh, if I buffer, guys, uh, bear with me. We'll, uh, you know, we'll try to get through it and everything. Now, uh, today we are talking about inlays. I don't want to yell in the microphone. Today we're talking about inlays, and um, we're going to be uh, designing an inlay project. We're going to see if we can, uh, you know, uh, discuss this in depth somewhat. So let's move over before my computer decides to uh, crash again. Let's move over to the Vetrix software and let's talk about the inlay process. Um, hopefully my uh, stream and everything is uh, going well. Hopefully my microphone is working on this screen. And uh, yeah, beer is okay, right? Um, okay. So, we're going to be talking about the V-Carve inlay process uh, first and foremost. Uh, we're going to create a V-Carve inlay. Uh, we're going to talk about it uh, a, a bit and everything and, um, and see what you guys and girls, uh, see if you, I can give you a better understanding of how it works. Uh, what you see on the screen are uh, some vectors. Now, let me move let me move this text over a bit let me see if I can size it down first there we go all right uh, when it comes to a V carve inlay the uh, concept of it is using a V-bit, uh, 60 degree V-bit, 90 degree V-bit, you know, uh, just making sure that the V-bit that we use is the same V-bit we use for the male as well as the female. Um, and what I have on the screen is basically kind of a drawing illustration of, a, uh, of the two parts of a V-carve inlay uh, coming together. Now, if we were to uh, take a moment and move this part here, and kind of move this, group it together, or male inlay. On the female inlay, if I were to come in here and draw my V bit, let's draw a 60 degree um, v bit. If I were to simulate uh, a V bit cut, basically, let's come down and over. You know. When that V-bit comes down and cuts 
uh, you know, and then comes, you know, travels across and then, of course, comes up and cuts uh, or comes up out of the cut. It creates this, uh, you know, V-shaped angle wall. Now, we need to make sure that the V-bit that we're using has a particular depth of cut if we're going to cut down to a certain depth, meaning that uh, I'm going to be using the 60 degree 1541 V-bit. Uh, it has a... Uh, depth of cut of about 0.2 and so we wouldn't want to exceed that depth of cut when we are creating our inlay um, the uh, we don't want we want a nice clean cut we don't want step downs or anything like that and we definitely do not want to exceed the flute uh, you know the cutter head or the cutting uh, edge of that V bit so we want to make sure that we know how deep our bit will cut now if I were to look uh, and take a measurement a horizontal measurement or a vertical measurement should I say from the tip of my bit to the top of the cutting flute uh, you know I'm about 0.2406 so being within the point two uh, is, you know, good for my bit. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not exceeding it. And so the, uh, depending on the wideness of your head, depending on, uh, you know, the cutter length of the flute and things, uh, you want to make sure you're kind of aware of that so you don't exceed it. Now, if we were to look at this female part of this inlay here, and let's say that this uh, our bit has come and cut out this section here, uh, the top surface of our material, also referred to as our artwork plane, um, from that point down below, we're going to have the inlay depth and then below that inlay depth we're going to have glue space so this space within here is going to be glue space kind of a glue space kind of an air gap and when we create our male part we want to make sure that um, basically our cut depth, not our start depth, we'll talk about the start depth in a minute, but our cut depth, our cut depth is the inlay depth, how deep we want the inlay to be, plus the glue space. So if I were to take on this V-carve inlay here, and let's go into the V-carve toolpath, we have a start depth and we have a flat depth for our you know female pocket area and let's say that that flat depth is 0.15 that's going to be 0.1 for the inlay depth and then 0.05 for the glue space if we went 0.2 uh, you know, uh, then you could do an inlay depth of, you know, let's say 0.15 and then 0.05 being glue space. You don't have a lot, you know, a lot of glue space. You're not, you're not creating a lot of glue space in there. So typically you're either going to be cutting to a depth of 0.2 or you're going to be cutting to a depth of 0.15. Uh, for me, I use a 0.15. Okay. 0.15. Now, when it comes to the male inlay, we have a start depth and a cut depth. And the start depth, if I were to take this part and invert it to the way it would look if we were machining it, let me rotate this. Let me take an rotate this uh, what would that be 180 degrees and I were to move it over let's imagine we are machining that part out we have a start depth and then we have our 
flat depth. Now when we start the cut, we're going to be starting down the depth of the inlay. Okay, the inlay depth. So our start depth is going to be 0.1. And then we're going to cut down, in this case, a little more than our glue space. We're going to be cutting down twice that. And so we would be cutting down an additional 0.1. So we're going to start at 0.1 and cut down to 0.1. And, and this flat depth technically is the depth of our inlay, our inlay depth here. And then the other 0.1 is the gap between the two parts. What I mean by that, if I were to revert this back another 180 degrees... And I bring this down. Stand by while I get everything lined up. When this part goes in, the space, the remaining space here, uh, between the male and the female part, that's going to be a space of 0.1 of an inch. That's the space. That's the gap. And we want that gap so that we can get a bandsaw in between there, so we can get a handsaw in between there, so we can cut these two parts of, uh, you know, of, apart. And so we want to make sure that I... I don't want my cut depth uh, of my inlay to be 0 0.2 uh, just because I'm going 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 here. Um, if I did, then my start depth and my flat depth would be different uh, for the cutting depths of the mail. Uh, in this case, I typically tend on that 0.2 uh, or that uh, 0.15, I'm sorry, typically tends to be my cut of depth cut because I want 0.1 of material going into the inlay and I want to leave a small 0.05 glue space. I'm trying, I'm overcomplicating this, but uh, uh, I'm not trying to. Um, we just have to have that glue space. So on our female, our cut depth is going to be 0.15. Okay. 0.15 and if you stick with these numbers and all for most of your inlays uh, you will get good results your cut depth your start depth for your female is going to be zero uh, your flat depth is going to be 0.15 using a 60 degree 1541 v-bit now if you are using a half inch head uh, 90 degree v-bit you may want to bring this to 0.2 uh, but for the 60 degree 1541 V-bit, 0.15 is a good depth. That gives us a 0.1 depth for our melon lay to fit into, and then it gives us about a 0.05 for glue space. Now, when we create that female, our depth of cut for that, or for, I'm sorry, when we create our mail, our depth of cut, our start depth is 0.1, which is the inlay depth. And our flat depth is another 0.1, and that's going to be the gap between the two parts. So 0.1 and 0.1. Have I have I lost you all yet? Um, sound is cutting in and out. I don't know what to do about it. I really don't, Leanne. I I just. Uh, I just don't know what to do about it. Um, when cutting, is there a way to put in multiple dash desks when cutting on hardwoods? Very rough. Uh, yes, we're going to create some offset lines in our design to help. Uh, hog away some of that material, and then we can do the multiple pass steps. Uh, Dennis um, 
uh, and that'll be all in when we create the tool pass in the uh, in this job when we create the tool pass I'll show you how to create your vectors uh, for your boundary your offset boundaries and all and a way to hog away the waste material especially on the male cut uh, to create that uh, inlay now for the female you want you do not want any step downs or anything like that so you want to take that full depth of cut uh, for the female point two um, but on the male we've got a lot of material to clear out and clean up and things uh, you would uh, I'll show you guys how to do that uh, then we could set multiple pass steps now I'm going to turn off um, the dimensions layer and my layer for my vectors and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these designs here. I'm going to zoom out. All right, for this job, on the job setup, we're doing a single-sided job. Uh, I've got a 12 by 15 inch board here. It's going to be three quarters of an inch thick. I'm referencing off the material surface uh, for the Z0 position and my XY datum is going to be in the center of the job. I'm going to click OK and I want to import some vectors. Uh, I will uh, start off with, I've got a trout, let's bring in our trout here and let's center this trout onto our material. All right, we've got a nice looking trout here. And uh, with this trout, where it's going to basically be two contrasting pieces of material, my um, wood would be something dark like a cherry or a walnut. And then um, my trout is most likely going to be like a maple or something, a contrasting material. Now, of course, uh, I've got multiple designs. We're going to talk about those multiple designs and things. But um, we're going to lay out basically, if I was doing a cutting board, uh, I'm going to lay out some vectors and stuff. And we're going to create um, basically a flat sawn cutting board versus an ingrain. You could do an ingrain too. And uh, this has nothing to do with how to create that ingrain cutting board. Um, this just has to do with the inlay part of it. Now, on this, uh, I'm going to take my trout and I'm going to group it together. I'm going to make sure it is centered on my material using my alignment tool, Align to Material. And I'm still stuck on the screen, so bear with me and let me see why I'm still stuck on the screen. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right, let's see if we can uh, create another shot. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> stand by. Jesus. All right, so we are going to uh, create a new local desktop shot. All right, stand by, everybody.
come on. All right, well, um, got to have the patience of a saint with this one. Uh, let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. All right, let's see if I can. All right. Yes, I know the screen's not changing, Wayne. I'm, I'm, I'm up on it. I, I actually see everything that you guys see. Uh, thank you uh, for letting me know. Um, okay. Hopefully, we'll transition over to the uh, this window, and hopefully, uh, everything will be working properly. Uh, most likely everything is going to work properly except for my mouse. Uh, so. You're going to see a slight transition back to the other screen for a minute. You do see a mouse. Uh, the mouse is working. You can see the mouse on the uh, on the screen. That's all that matters if you can see the mouse. Um, all right, so with this trout, I'm going to align it to the center of my material. And um, I want to, uh, because he's kind of offset uh, the way he's jumping out of the water and things, um, if I were to going to be doing some kind of uh, banding, you know inlay band around here uh, I don't think it would throw it off too much so let's go ahead and create that uh, I'm gonna start off with a rectangle and I'm gonna snap it to both corners of my material and I'm gonna use my offset tool to offset it inward I'd like to be offset inward about three quarters of an inch I don't want to create sharp corners on this. Uh, I want to um, have that turned off. And I want to go ahead to show you how to create a radius on this, uh, on these corners and all, to match kind of the router bit that you're using and things. Um, I'm going to use that offset tool on this item here. And I'm going to offset outward the distance of my tool radius, uh, which is going to be an eighth of an inch. Let's try that again. 0.125. And if I offset outward, it'll create that radius of my offset inward uh, it's going to create that sharp point so we want to offset outward 
and I want to delete the original okay to create those radius there and now on this item here I do want a I want this to be a nice little uh, thin band uh, so I'll probably go oh I don't know quarter three sixteenth so point one eight seven five I don't want to make it too thin because I have to machine this part out uh, that inlay part uh, out of my contrasting material if I'm going to inlay that as well but um, oops I want to not delete the original on this one uh, and I want to create that double border that double band okay so we basically took that square corner rectangle and we offset it outward to create the radius edge and then once I had that radius edge went ahead and offset it out the distance of how wide I want my band okay my band and I want to make sure no matter what I do I want to make sure my bit that I'm gonna be using to pocket this out can fit in there and my my eighth inch bit uh, can fit in there just fine um, now when we are creating an inlay especially a V carve inlay we need to mirror our design um, for the male part and so I want to come in and on my layers here I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna call this my male inlay layer and the layer that says trout right now which is you know the layer I'm drawing on I'm gonna rename that for you guys uh, as my female inlay and all of these other items are insignificant you see their sheets are blank on layer one so I can go ahead and delete layer one I can delete that zero layer uh, explaining the inlays those are those vectors that we drew out a moment ago so I'll leave that one my dimensions I'll leave those uh, this one is empty we don't need that so I should have just four layers here for my design now on the uh, from the female layer with it active my drawing layer I want to right click on this trout and I want to make a copy of it to the male inlay layer okay um, I'm also going to make a copy of my band to the male inlay layer as well. Now if I shut off that female layer, I'm now inside the male layer. Make sure it's active before you do anything with it. And with this, I want to mirror the design. Now if I were to V carve inlay this outside band as well, which I believe I am going to do. Uh, yeah, we'll do that one too. I want to make sure everything is selected and I want to mirror this. And I do not want to create a mirror copy. I do want to flip it about the job center and I want to flip it horizontally. I want to mirror it. Your mail is always mirrored. Think of two pieces, uh, you know, coming together like a sandwich. And, uh... <laughs> All right, no problem, Baron. You did not miss a thing. Trust me on being late. Uh, we had one heck of a rocky start. I'm still trying to get my bearings back. I'm a little bit uh, perplexed right now, um, so it's not running as smoothly as I'd like. All right, so for that, uh, let's let's talk about. It's all about the tool pass. I mean, it's really all about the design too. Uh, but once we have our design in, we want to mirror it and all. But now, before I create my tool pass. I want to, there, there's some area here that I want to clear out and, uh, you know, uh, clean up and do some kind of almost like, think of it almost like a waste removal cut. And for this waste removal cut, 
on this area here, I want to offset this and the offset distance is uh, it's it's relevant um we, we want to we want to make sure that we're offsetting at a a distance of um uh, that we're not going to be cutting into our inlay at all when we do our rough pocket and things because we will be milling down to the full depth so what i need to do is i need to find out um, i know that my cut depth is going to be 0.2 and um it's it would be nice to know what my offset uh measurement is on this v carve mail part uh, at a depth of 0.2 or 0.15. I'm sorry, I keeps I got 0.2 on the brain. Um, uh, well, it, it technically is going to be a 0.2 because of the 0.1 and 0.1. And so, what I need to know is what my depth uh, or my distance of offset is going to be. So, if I were to take my line and draw a my bit again. And I were to take a straight line across the bottom of that bit to represent the top of my board. If I were to cut a depth of 0.2, if I were to move this line representing a cut depth of 0.2, we could then come in and take a measurement looks smaller than 0.2 did I say did I type in 0.02 let me see here move okay no it was 0.2 right, I just want to make sure it just didn't look like it was deep enough all right, on that point two depth, if I were to come in and take a measurement, horizontal measurement, um, then I could measure from the tip of my bit to that intersection of the cut. And I could see that I'm at a distance of about 0.1155 uh, away from, you know, the edge of my design. My, my bit's going to be cutting 0.1115 away. So when I offset this trout, I want to offset uh, at least beyond that. And so I'm going to come in and let's say that we offset uh, 0.12. Too many decimal points. I want to offset outward. Uh, and I do not want sharp corners. I do want to select the new because when I offset this, all I'm concerned about are these outside areas, these outside vectors, not the inside vectors. So I want to turn off the outside border here, uh, this outside piece here, and these two little guys right here because I'm going to be um, deleting the rest of this. Let me double check on some things. Yeah, we're going to delete all that rest of that stuff. <coughs> Now, from those areas, from those outside areas and things, including this one, oops, not that one, this one, I want to offset that one more time 
and this one I really don't care what the distance is uh, but we're gonna let's go let's go at least an eighth of an inch and uh, offset that again Okay, um, now what this is going to do for me, it's going to give me some vectors to use uh, with my boundary uh, for machining all of this area away. Now, uh, someone's asking a question, Glenn Jones, if you are going to inlay the border as well as the trout, why are you messing with offsetting the fish instead of just doing the entire inlay in one piece? Because all of this area here is getting pocketed away. All of this area between my border. It's all going to be done out of one piece. Glenn, it's a V-carve inlay. It's all done out of one piece. But all this wide space area in here on my male part is going to be milled away. I'm trying to create vectors to where I can create a pocket cut to mill that away to eliminate the process of my V-bit having to do a lot of work. Let me know if that makes sense to you. Okay. All right. So now, on these boundaries here, I'm going to go ahead and select them, and I'm going to put them on their own layer. This boundary here. We're going to move these to a layer and this is going to be our pocket boundary. Or this one's going to be our V card boundary. And I'm going to give this a color of uh, dark red. And then this vector here. these guys here and this vector here I'm gonna move to another layer and this is gonna be my pocket boundary and I'll give this color a uh, blue Okay. Yes, uh, Glenn, I can put a box around the outer border, but again, when I create that V carve tool path using the box around the border and everything to create this mail pocket, it's going to be doing the cut in one pass. And I would like to clear out the flat areas as much as I can with my end mill doing multiple passes okay I want to I want to clear out a bulk of this because I don't want my V carved tool path in one pass to be doing it um, and so um, we are going to be creating a boundary around this outside border here so that this area around it gets milled out and all so this border gets raised so it fits into the mail part and things but i'm also trying to create um <laughs> yes the flat bottom depth does that uh but it does it in one pass by being able to use the pocket tool path i can control how many passes that i take in the v carve tool path i cannot Okay. No, if 
Um, let's get over to the tool pass so uh, we can uh, answer Glenn's questions and kind of explain to him the process and things. Um, if I were to <coughs> going to be doing this with just the V-carve tool path, none of the borders and vectors or anything like that, uh, and I went ahead and surrounded my mail with a boundary. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, keeping in mind, notice that um, I am notice that I am sur selecting my entire piece of material here. Uh, what that means is I'm going to be using alternative clamping methods because uh, my clamps aren't going to be on this board. So you got to you know remember that. Now, if you're going to be uh, using uh, your on the board clamps, then your board needs to be bigger uh, and things. But I'm going to be milling the top surface of this, so most likely I'm going to be hot gluing my part down or something like that. Now, if I were to come in here and I were to select my boundary my border and my trout forgetting any of the vectors I just created because I'm going to be using my V bit and my flat depth and not worry about controlling waste or depth of cut or any of that stuff then I would have my boundary selected I would have my vectors uh, for my border selected and I would have my trout vectors selected I would be using a V-carve toolpath with a start depth of 0.1 and a flat depth of 0.1 and I would be using my 60 degree V-bit and my flat area clearance tool but notice with my flat area clearance tool I do not have control of past depths there's nowhere for me to set past steps here. So if I were to calculate this, of course, it would come out, you know, uh, fine. I'm going to call this my mail inlay. And I were to calculate this. And if we were to preview this visible toolpath, my okay, we would end up with a piece that looks like this. Got a lot of flat areas in here and things, and I'm starting, I'm plunging this bit at point one and cutting down to point one from there. And, you know, my little eighth inch bit uh, that I'm using, you know, I don't want to be burning it up like that. I want to take. Nope. The flat depth isn't point two. It is point two. Yes, I mean it is point two. Look at the look at look at the bottom numbers down here, um, Glenn. At the bottom right of the screen, my cut depth is negative point two. Point one plus point one equals point two. I'm starting point one from the top of my board down into the wood, and I'm cutting down an additional point one for a total depth of cut of 0.2. Okay. So that is the depth that I want to cut to. If we look at that again, I am starting 0.1 below the surface of the board. That bit is plunging down starting at 0.1 and then it is cutting down from that 0.1 to another depth of 0.1 for a total depth of cut of 0.2. Okay. All right. And so when we calculate that, we end up with our male part that looks something like this. Now, 
Alternatively, I do not want my eighth inch bit, which cost me thirty-eight dollars. I don't want I don't want it to um, have to go through and uh, you know work that hard and things. I want to take uh, past depths and all. So I've created some vectors for me to use uh, with this process. One is I've got my boundaries here. I've got these boundary lines and things. And for the boundary line coming with this inside vector here, as well as uh, this inside pocket and my, do I want to go right up to my border standby? Stand by one moment. I want to offset that one too. So let me offset this inward. 0.12. There we go. That way I can use that uh, and I'm not cutting right up to my area here. And I want to go ahead and select my vectors again. And now with that, I can do a pocket toolpath cutting to a depth of 0.2, which is the depth of my inlay pocket region area here. And I can use my eighth inch end mill. You can even, we can actually even use our quarter inch end mill, but I don't believe the quarter inch is going to fit. I can use a larger end mill. Let me see here. Uh, my, I need these vectors too. Let's see here, all my blue vectors. Um, <coughs> I can, my quarter inch end mill get in there, so I can use a larger area end mill if I want to. I'll, um, let's see here. We'll use our quarter inch end mill. And I want it to be done in two passes. You can now edit or control your pass depths and things. Um, whatever the case may be. And... I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. If I was using my eighth inch end mill, I'd do it in three passes, but I'm going to calculate this tool path. And if we reset this preview, we can now preview our pocket cut. And now I can use a larger diameter bit. Here comes the second pass area. And again, if you don't care about, you know, controlling pass steps or anything like that and you just want to go straight at it, then eliminate anything that I'm teaching you tonight as far as that. Um, 
Now my female, my female is going to be 0.15 Wayne uh, when I get to it. We're not we're 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 working on the male right now. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. There's only, uh, Glenn, on the, um, on the male inlay, the point one and point one, uh, I will have a gap, uh, between the two parts. Um, I'm only going to be cutting my female pocket to 0.15. Okay, so I'm going to have that gap between the two parts. My inlay depth is going to be 0.1 and the glue space is going to be 0.5. Um, which means that my inlay is only going to snap in, my male is only going to snap in so far of that female and it's going to create that separation between the two parts. Have a little faith in me. I'll tell you, I won't steer you wrong when I'm teaching you. Okay. Um, and let's just uh, have a little faith and let's get through this. Uh, okay. So now, the same thing is going to apply, uh, which I should have created all in one toolpath. Let me go ahead and offset this line outward, uh, that point one two. So that way I can, in this pocket cut, uh, I wanna go ahead and, oops, select those two vectors as well and add those in. Let me grab all these guys again. And I'm gonna recalculate that, uh, I'm gonna call this the roughing pocket. Let me learn how to spell. All right. Um, and we can go ahead and, um, oops, did I miss a vector? I missed a vector somewhere, bear with me. On my inside. All right, let's recalculate that one more time. I missed my inside vector there. Come on, open up there, buddy, bro. All right, let me recalculate that. Okay, so what this will uh, do for me is I can go ahead and um, let's preview this toolpath uh, one more time, kind of clean up. Now where I'm wrong, is you see these little uh, spaces out here. Let's zoom out. You see this little lip that I left. I should have on my very, very outside boundary. Should have offset this one out just a little bit beyond my material. Uh, let's go a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm gonna delete the original. There we go. Now I can come in. And recalculate that. I'm in a flustered. Um, you have to bear with me now. Let me get my head straight again. Alright. So uh, now we can preview that toolpath.
So essentially what I'm doing with this roughing pocket, guys and girls, is I'm taking uh, control of my eighth inch end mills pass depths. If I were not using this roughing tool path and I was just straight on uh, doing the male cut, well then the when I'm cutting down and plunging that bit 0.1 into that solid surface material that has not been cut away or anything like that, and I'm cutting down to an additional 0.1 for a total depth of cut of 0.2, there is no steps, okay? It's going straight down to that 0.2 depth of cut. And it is uh, a lot of wear and tear on my end mill tip. Well, I like to be able to control my pass depth and the heat that builds up on my bit. So therefore, I've created some additional vectors around my trout around my boundary and things so I can use these additional vectors as boundaries to create a roughing pocket cut where I have absolute control on how many passes my bit takes. And that will help extend and relieve some of the, the, the beating up of the bit that I'm going that I would experience if I did not. Um so that's why we have a roughing pocket cut. From that roughing pocket cut, now on my mail inlay, I do not need to um, use my very far outside boundary. Uh, I can kind of limit the cutting area if I wanted to because all I need to do is raise this area which I've got two vector lines um, for the, uh, you know, the, the mail part and everything. I've got uh, additional boundary lines and things that, uh, you know, I can create. Um, before we create that mail inlay, let's take a look at the female inlay so you guys and girls can see what's you know what's really happening here let's turn some things off and go to the male inlay female inlay sorry my female inlay and for my female inlay i'm basically just doing a v carve of my trout and stuff so we're going to have a v carve inlay uh, we're going to have a zero start depth with a flat depth of 0.15. Um, not much of my area is going to go down to that 0.15. There's not going to be too many flat areas in here. Uh, so we can come in uh, and I'm still going to use a flat area clearance tool if there are any. Um, but uh, I'll use an eighth inch end mill. But let's go ahead and we're going to call this our female. And if somebody in the group is texting me, let me know if you're trying to get my attention or something. Uh, female inlay. Because I'm not answering. Let's see here. Bear with me. Let me see who's texting me. called who out why would you um why would anybody think I'm calling them out um let's uh let's start over again here uh there is not a problem with asking questions at all um the I want you guys to ask questions and everything, but one of the things is is it, it, it least let the uh, hold on to the questions until we get through uh, you know past the part uh, so that uh, because that question was in the process of being explained um, and you know there's a there's a method and a purpose for why you know designs are created certain ways and vectors are created certain ways and at the you know 
at the point in the lesson if there's still if there's a question that we need to go back on um, to answer absolutely uh, but the questions uh, when they're asked before the before the explanation has even been taught it makes it a little bit difficult uh, that doesn't mean um, no one here is making anyone look bad at all and um, there's no absolutely no need to stop watching the live classes uh, because you can ask questions now um, if you feel offended and I have hurt your feelings in any way I apologize uh, to anyone that may think that I am I have offended them in any way and uh, you know um, these classes are free uh, and, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving a, a lot of time to putting these lessons together to, in order to help teach. Uh, and I, you know, these, this is, this is something that I am doing. It's a, it's a courtesy offering for free. Uh, and I, I want you to be able to ask questions in this. I want you to be able to learn from these. Uh, and if you feel like I'm offending you, then I'm apologizing. Um, but uh, uh, at least let let the lesson go, get a little ways involved because the questions you're asking are going to get answered. There's an explanation for the reason why vectors are created, the reason why you know things are mirrored, uh, the reason why anything is done. Um, and if I don't explain that reason, then absolutely ask the question to clear up any confusion. Uh, but in no way am I uh, saying that anyone's in a bad way or anything by asking questions. I want you to ask questions. Um, but uh, the questions, you know, the questions you ask uh, people may maybe answering so uh, if you're still in the group you're still in the class I apologize um, you know and uh, if you feel offended or in any way I apologize I hope you continue watching these classes if not there are wonderful videos on the Vetric website uh, there's many many people out there that teach classes on Vetric I am not the only instructor and the only game in town when it comes to instructing. Uh, and uh, I hate to lose you, but, you know, I hate to lose you. Okay, but I can't control if you want to watch me or not. Um, all right. So with that female inlay, we have a start depth of 0, a flat depth of 0.15, um, 60 degree V-bit, eighth inch end mill. Uh, that's going to do our, you know, V carving and then, you know, flatten uh, any little flat areas out in the design that needs to be flattened out, which there's not going to be many. There's not many wide spaces in there. And so if we were to calculate this female inlay, and we reset this preview and we preview the uh, visible tool pass. We should have our, uh, you know, our V groove pocket uh, area, our V groove area for our outside border, and then we have our trout. Now we did have some flat areas right around the trout's uh, backbone uh, or whatever uh, you know is uh, side here. So the flat area to current stool did clear that out where it could not fit the V bit cleared out and stuff. But this is going to be our female part okay and uh, uh, thank you David that was very nice of you to say I appreciate it um, and again if you're still in the room I'm not gonna call any names uh, I apologize uh, if you felt offended or if you felt like I called you out or felt I made you look bad in front of the group or something nobody looks bad questions are wonderful um, 
I should have just uh, waited to answer the questions at the end of the class. I should have just let them scroll through and answered them later instead of earlier on. Uh, and uh, so maybe I'm in the wrong for answering too early. Um, so we've got some areas here. So we can see all the uh, pocket areas that the mail is going to fit into. Our mail parts and stuff. Uh, not a bad looking fish there would be a nice looking inlay if we added some color in here to kind of uh, simulate uh, what this would look like as an inlay which is not going to look that great because of course uh, you know it's hard to simulate it uh, but let's uh, let's let's simulate it let's see what we can come up with How would we simulate that? Let's go with a tan. Nah, that looks terrible. It's hard to simulate an inlay because the fill color area fills all the way down to the bottom and you know the inlay is nice and flush with the top surface. It's really hard to simulate it. Uh, Let's see if I can give myself a different color. Uh, let's say that we're going to inlay this with purple heart. <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue anymore. All right. Walnut and purple heart. Two dark woods. Not a very good looking inlay. But you know what I mean. Um, but uh, so, but it, it, all in all, it would be a nice looking inlay as far as a... Uh, you know, a design itself, as far as the design itself, it'd be neat looking, not too shabby. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and let's kind of explain this process uh, in a more clear tone. Here is our female inlay. We have just our regular design, our border and our trout. Uh, we've positioned the border and the trout and everything. We've got it laid out on our board. And we're very simply using a V-bit to V-carve this to a depth of 0.15 from the top of our board. Uh, any flat areas are going to be cleared out by the flat area clearance tool, you know, for our glue space areas. Uh, that's the where the flat areas are. That's going to be the glue space areas. Our Mel inlay is only going to uh, fit in uh, to point one of this. The other point oh five is gonna be where the glue space is in things. Um, and uh, the, um, the male part is then mirrored off of this so if we came in and we mirrored that male part and keep in mind the male part is going to be the trout and the border okay all these additional vectors and I'm gonna group these two together so we know which one they are they're all solid pink uh, those are gonna be the male parts now the additional vectors that we've created this vector here this vector here and this far outside vector as well as the v carve pocket boundary these blue vectors here and this uh or the pocket boundary sorry and this v carve boundary are here um these additional vectors are created to help us um, create that that additional roughing pocket cut uh, with our flat bit and our pocket toolpath to kind of reduce the wear and tear by our instead of instead of being you know going a total of a 0.2 depth of cut, we've created these additional vectors so we can create a pocketing toolpath so that we actually have control of the pass depth. If I wanted to take less of a pass depth, maybe I wanted to take, you know, four pass steps, uh, taking, you know, a few thousandths of an inch at a time, 
you know, just to save on my, you know, bits, uh, you know, getting heated up too fast or something like that, then I could, you know, I have total control now. I can create pass steps and things, uh, uh, you know, multiple passes. I keep saying pass depths, but multiple passes. Um, and in this case, I'm doing it in, you know, two passes to that full depth of uh, point 0.2. Now, the... Point one of that is going to be my inlay, and the other point one is going to be sticking up above, and it's going to create that gap between my two parts and things. Um, you know, when I separate these pieces. Now, would um, would uh, it be easy to just do this without yes absolutely but if we want to kind of i don't know it's, it's just kind of smart carving uh in a sense you know we're creating you know less wear and tear on our bits uh, uh anywhere that we can do that uh we'd want to do that i would think and um we're now using vectors uh boundaries and all to help us do this so now how do we create this male part so we know how to create the pocket so with the pocket cut that roughing pocket cut we're using our very outside boundary we're using our very inside boundary as well as um this one here this is going to kind of do the rough cut around this edge right here and then this vector and our blue vector here, if I select all the blue areas, that's gonna create the boundaries for that inside pocket. So when we calculate that toolpath, we get that rough cut. If we preview that roughing cut, we get that rough cut that's going to hog away basically all that waste material. Okay. Now, with that, we already have this waste material hogged away. So, when we're doing the V carve for the male part, we don't need to worry about all of this stuff right here. Okay. We don't need to worry about all this stuff right here. All we need to do is just machine around our bass. And we can use vectors as machining limits. And that's why we created that second set of vectors. So for this, if I were to do that male inlay part, of course, for the male inlay, we've got our trout and everything. We would have typically, normally, when we have our trout and our boundary selected, we would have an outside, you know, boundary selected. But we don't need to go way out here because now if we go way out here, it's milling all of this. Uh, and then it's leaving um, this untouched. And then it's coming in and it's milling all of this. And then it's cutting, you know, in here. Well, we now have... Um, uh, these boundaries around so we're going to use them to our advantage we're going to use them to our advantage this boundary here this vector this vector and our bass and now we'll use this outside boundary here and this guy we'll use that as our kind of our machining limits and all and that means I'm going to have a little pocket area here where my bit is going to do some flat work around this area but it's not going to have to do all of this right here um, and would we create those uh, in two separate tool paths uh, so that uh, it doesn't machine all of this area. Well, let's calculate it and let's see where we're at. So we're going to go point 0.1 for the start depth, point uh, 0.1 for the flat depth. We're going to, that's going to give us a total depth of cut of point 0.2. We're going to be using our 60 degree V bit and our eighth inch end mill. And when we calculate this tool path, if I've selected the correct vectors, if I've selected the correct vectors, 
If I reset this preview, oops, let's uh, let's not reset the preview. Sorry. Let's preview that roughing toolpath. Let's get it back in there. Um, let me get that roughing cut back in there. That was idiotic of me. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, on that, we should now, if I look at the pocket side of this, you can see all the little areas that are getting pocketed out, you know, closer to my bass and things. So let's go ahead and uh, do all the pocket work first so we can see that cut. Okay. See all that pocketing. And then now for the male inlay part, if I did this correctly, <laughs> no telling now. Uh, if I did this correctly on the male inlay part, I should end up with my little V-shaped border. Ta-da! All right. Um, Should end up with my little male B-shaped border and my all my bass area. And if we, you know, and that's going to be the male inlay. And then we would take that and snap that into the female inlay, that point one. Uh, depth is going to go in there and then we're going to have that gap between the two parts. But now by doing that, let's see if I've actually, did I, uh, have I helped uh, save any time? Have I created more time because we've got to count in the time of that roughing tool path? Uh, what all, you know, what, what did we do other than save uh, on the wear and tear on the bit, which is important. But, um, Let's look. So right now my roughing cut is based on my feeds and speeds and things uh, and the multiple passes. It's going to be about 50 minutes of cutting on this uh, 12 by 20 project. Uh, 12 by 15. So it's going to be 50 minutes of cutting on this rough cut. Okay. Two passes, uh, eighth inch per pass, or I'm sorry, uh, 0.1 per pass, whatever it may be, on that rough cut, um, and uh, you know, roughing that out. Now, I'm also, to be fair on the timing and stuff, I'm gonna create my border, my vector boundary. I surround my design with a boundary and I just do the uh, point 0.1 and point 0.1. Okay. If I look at that part uh, by itself, where it um, let's go into the time so we can actually see them. Three hours and twelve minutes. So I'm taking starting at point one, plunging that bit in, cutting down to point one. It's taking three hours and twelve minutes. If I eliminate that and I came in and did that roughing cut and then did my mail inlay with the boundaries that's an hour and 53 minutes so I'm saving an hour and uh, hour and six minutes of machining time and I'm controlling my depth of cut to reduce the wear and tear on my bit. So not only am I reducing the time by an hour, 
I'm saving, you know, I'm reducing the wear and tear of my bit. Um, uh, so, oh, do, do, does any of that make sense? Let's stop right here, and now this would be a good time for questions. Uh, the... Um, The uh, does this make sense to you guys? Uh, do you understand uh, what basically what we're what we're trying to do? We're doing a simple V carve inlay. Okay, that's I mean that's the end goal, right? We're inlaying this trout, but how we approach it, uh, we can be smart about how we do our machining, and we can think about how we we lay out our design to one reduce machining time. And number two, minimize wear and tear on our tools, our cutters, and things. And so um, we, one, uh, have eliminated an hour and tw uh, eight minutes or whatever it may be. Uh, here, let's look at the times again. Let's turn these three off. Uh, three hours and 12 minutes versus an hour and 53 minutes. So uh, what is that? An hour and um, eight minutes, something like that. Hour and nine minutes. Hour and nine minutes we cut off. And we're reducing the past depth. So we're reducing the heat that builds up on our bit. We're extending the life of our bit. So... Uh, we're 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 achieving the same goal of creating that that male part for our inlay, but we're also we've taken it a step further, and we've saved time. And we saved wear and tear on our tools. And that's what the lesson is in this, and that was the reason for uh, creating those additional vectors, because if you watch any V carve inlay video or process, they say cut the female. You know, 0.15. Uh, cut the male, 0.1 and 0.1. They don't talk anything about... There might be a video out there uh, that does. Uh, but they don't talk anything about, um, you know, creating additional vectors, uh, reducing machining time, uh, re, you know, optimizing your tool path to save on your tools. None of that stuff. And I'm hoping that my lessons provide a little bit more insight and just make you think a little bit more I know they're confusing from time to time but hopefully they make you think for the next time when you're approaching a project you know you got to think about the big picture you got to think about your tools you're replacing your bits you're burning them up your tool pass and things like that you know it's not just the you know it's not just at the software, you know, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond when you're at your machine and you're running these jobs. How can we best run this job to save on our tools, save on our time, because time is money, and all of these things. And when we think about that, then we know how to approach the designing part of it because in order to approach the designing part appropriately, we have to create those additional vectors. And now we know how to do that. You know, okay, if I'm going to reduce this, you know, in things, uh, what's, what's going to be the best way to do it? And I'm just trying to show you one of those ways. It may not be the best way. It's one way. Um, and, you know, um, so, all right, let's, uh, we've got our rough cut done here. This is our rough cut. Let's uh, look at our uh, V-carve inlay, get it in there. And let's uh, preview that uh, visible tool path again. And then we're going to do it one more time with a different design. We're going to create from start to finish less confusion. Now that you kind of get the concept 
we're going to do it one more time with a different design. All right. So here we go. We're going to start fresh. I am going to save this because I actually like the trout and I might actually make this project. So we're going to save this. Uh, save as trout project. Oh, I like it. If you guys, by the way, I'll be providing all of these DXF files for you and these project files. Um, and, uh, you know, go from there. Um, the, uh, let's, okay, real quick before we move on. Um, William, so the 153 minutes is the male inlay. The male inlay. Uh, the female cut uh, William, the female cut thirty two minutes. The female cut is thirty two minutes, William. Okay. Um, and uh, Bob, uh, what pressure? Do you need to glue them together? Brick on top or use uh, press and how long? Well, uh, typically uh, glue, let's say that we're using a tight bond glue, you know, tight bond two or something like that. Uh, whatever the case may be, even tight bond three. Um, but tight bond is kind of my glue of choice and all. Um, I, you know, for a nice solid inlay, I'm gonna recommend an over the night glue up, okay? Um, I'm going to recommend an over the night glue up, but if you really want to be realistic about it, um, the glue sets up in about two hours, you know, but before I start working it, uh, cutting the pieces apart, uh, sanding everything down, I want to make sure that glue is good and cured. So I would recommend an over-the-night glue-up. I could be 50% uh, confident that within three hours, it would be set up enough that I could work with it. But for, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, if it's something that um, I'm not in a real rush on, then I'm going to leave it overnight. Now, the pressure, as far as the pressure, uh, these two parts are going to pretty much kind of fit together with a little bit of a snap almost in a sense. You know, they're going to snap together and that's a good sign. You want that little, you know, kind of, you know, where they fit together nicely. They just click, you know, together. Um, the, uh, you want good pressure. So, I mean, whether you put a brick or something heavy on top, that's fine. Whether you're using a uh, hydraulic press, you know, to put some clamping pressure, or you're just using clamps, maybe some clamps all the way around, um, you want you want good pressure. <coughs> but I think uh, would be suffice uh, to say if I took a cinder block on top and set it on, stood it on top of this inlay, that that would be enough clamping pressure for this glue up. You know what I mean? Um, it, you know, it, it's only going to go so far in and all we care about that is it holds in place. You know, so if I had a standard cinder block sitting on top of these two parts, that would be enough weight to provide clamp adequate clamping pressure for them. Um, if I were using clamps, I would use multiple clamps around the uh, border or even a long reach uh, C clamp to get into the center, you know, to provide some center pressure and stuff, and uh, just standard clamping pressure. You no need to over torque it because what happens is, is you get that glue squeeze out. Well, you're if you're if you over clamp it too much, you're kind of squeezing out the glue. That's why we have that 0.05 pocket in there. That air gap, that glue gap, is to provide that glue space somewhere for that squeeze out to go, rather so it goes down into the. Um, the uh, inlay versus out, you know. Um, all right, so let's see here. Um, 
Uh, oh, you guys scrolled all the way past. Hold on a second. Um, there was one more up there. Uh, Dave. No, wait, hold on. No, uh, before Dave. Let's see here. Uh, no, Dave. Uh, Dave had any... Uh, Lainey, ha I have had some luck using resins for any... Uh, in, in, for inlays. Um, any advice? Well, now, there are... Um, there are different types of things you can do for inlays. You can do crust shell um, for inlays. You can they you know they have uh, resin powders. They have resins. Uh, you know a, a, a epoxy not really an epoxy well, an epoxy resin that's a resin. Um, and you can you can be clear. You can add color to it. Uh, all kinds of things. Now to be honest with you. I've never done a resin inlay. Um, uh, I have done the baked clay. I don't know if you've ever seen that. The clay putty uh, that you fill in and you bake it and it cures uh, uh, at a certain temperature in the oven. Um, make sure your wood is dry before you do that or it will uh, warp. <laughs> but... Um, uh, but as far as an epoxy resin fill, I've never done. I have done epoxy with a shell inlay, like crushed, you know, rocks, uh, crushed uh, um, turquoise and shell and things like that. Um, but I've never done an actual full resin fill, you know, uh, to it. Be sure one word of advice that I can do is if you have like a little torch or something and you are going to do a resin fill, uh, lightly brush over it with a torch flame and remove any air bubbles from it. That would be the only advice that I could see uh, because uh, it does have prones. And do a, do a slow pour um, to help reduce those uh, air bubbles and stuff. But other than that, I have no real advice that I can give because I've never really done it. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. And what I was saying uh, about the trout and stuff, any of these designs that I'm doing, I do have the uh, DXF files of them and I can send them to you guys if you're interested in them. I will post them on Facebook. Um, uh, bear with me. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to read questions. So if you do not have tools to cut between the male and female, can you use, can you just cut out the fish border and the glue? All right. Good question. Now, wait a minute. Uh, David, Kenzie, um, if you don't have tools to cut between the male and female part to separate them, like a bandsaw and a handsaw, well, think outside the box. What we're we need to mill away that uh, top part of that mill. Let's let's kind of turn off. Let's go to our two D view here, and let's turn off all of our uh, tool pass and um, vectors, and let's talk about. Let's look at these parts here. So let's imagine that we don't have anything to cut these two parts. We're gonna be cutting, if we were cutting these, we would be cutting these parts separating. Imagine that dotted line right there is the blade, you know, cutting through. Well, we don't have those, well, what else do we have? Think, think, what else do we have? Oops, hold on a second. Let me undo what I'm about to do. Let me make that level active. Um, okay, what do we have? What am I drawing here? Let's see here. I mean, let me center this stuff up. We have a router, right? So why not why why not take our router 
and run a surfacing toolpath, which in a sense would be a pocket that we could literally come down and mill all of this material away until we get to the top of our board and the top of our inlay. Now, I would not run the router mill all the way down to zero, you know, the top of my board kind of thing, you know what I mean? Uh, leave a little bit, leave a little bit, and finish up with a random orbit sander. Okay? Leave a little bit, and then finish up with a random orbit sander. For our tool path, if we were, if we were, um, using a router we would basically in a sense be using this very far outside border here for our pocket cut and zero would be the top of that piece milling down however thick we need to mill down to before we get right above the top of the bottom piece you know our actual part so we're basically surfacing off that top layer. So you don't need a bandsaw or a handsaw. Um, uh, you can just surface it right off with your router and things. Uh, and so if we, you know, think about that, that's you know that's one way of doing it. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Yes, Stephen Allen uh, answered it as well. Fly cutter. Um, yep, uh, Dennis answered the same question. Uh, Peter, could they just had been done thin or use tabs and sand? Now, uh, Peter, um, help me out with that one, bud. Um, uh, um, you wouldn't, there's no tabs in this. Uh, the part can be done thin, absolutely. You know, it doesn't need to be a three quarter inch piece of material. It could be a half inch or what have you. You know, you're only cutting, you know, your inlay is only 0.1. So your material, even if your material was a, a, a quarter inch thick, you know, it's sufficient enough uh, material, um, you know, thickness for, uh, you know, for your inlay. But um, no matter what, you can either uh, mill it off. You can sand it off as you, as you suggested. Absolutely. Uh, when you mill, you don't mill all the way down to the surface. Um, and then um, you, you finish off with a sander uh, anyway. So, so yes, you, you're right on thinking there. Um, let's see here. So the Mel wood doesn't have to be thick, uh, since you're cutting it off and just sanding it off. Yes, Wayne, the Mel part does not have to be thick. Uh, you're only cutting to a depth of 0.2 on the Mel. So if you had a three eighths inch board, hell, if you had a quarter inch board, that would be plenty. Um, you know, but we don't want it to flex or bend or warp or anything like that. You know what I mean? So not too, too thin. Um, you want to have a little bit of meat, but it doesn't have to be three quarters of an inch thick. And, um, um, and exactly the thin stock does change how you clamp it up. Uh, Steven's exactly right on that. That's what my point is. We don't want it to warp and stuff. Um, now, um, uh, all right, Peter. Eighth inch thick material is 0.125. We're cutting to a depth for the male part of 0.2. Okay. So we need to be bigger than 0.2 at least. At least bigger than 0.2. So point, an eighth of an inch thick material would be too thin unless you were doing a smaller inlay uh, now an eighth of an inch material would be great for a traditional inlay and things like that 
uh, but not for the V-carb inlay. A little bit bigger than 0.2 is what you want. So a quarter inch piece of material would be ideal. All right, let's start uh, from scratch. Uh, we're gonna start a new project with a new design. And we're gonna run through this uh, just if we were beginning. I'm gonna do the same 12 by 15 and we're gonna click OK. And uh, I am going to start off by importing my vectors. Let's see, I've got a lion, I've got a tree with roots, I've got a tulips. Um, let's pick the, I'll show you all three of them. So this is the tree. Let's center it on the material. Okay, that's the tree. Uh, let me start a new layer here and turn that one off. And if I import the lion, let me center that one. Roar. And let me turn uh, that one off. And let me import the tulips. And let me center those. So these are just some, uh, you know, of uh, different designs and things. I'm thinking like a, you know, kind of a nice little inlay in the middle of a project. Like this would be a nice looking inlay. The tulips would be a nice looking inlay. Um, the tree. Think of uh, one of those, you know, family tree of life type projects where you have something. And we're going to even, with if we did the tree, then we would actually do some text uh, and we might even inlay that text, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, the lion, you know, the lion's head, uh, you know, it's a really nice, you know, inlay for whatever kind of project that it would go with. So um, let's look at the tree. Let's look at the tree. All right. All right, so with the tree here, this is going to be our female inlay. Let's uh, go ahead and let's make sure it's centered on our material. Let me turn the tree layer active. Make sure your layer is active when you're working with it. Um, I'm going to group it together as one item right now. And I want to make sure it's centered on my material, which it is. And let's say that we did some text with this. Uh, let's say that um, I don't have any good tree quotes off the top of my head right now. Um, uh, you know, uh, family where your roots, I don't know, has something like, you know, roots coming together. But let's just say that this was a, um, let's say that, uh, oh, we'll come up with something. Um, Let's go with uh, the <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I want to do like someone's name or something. Um, but I don't know why, how the tree could come into play. Normally you'd have some kind of nice little quote or something. But uh, I'm just going to do Johnson and uh, I am going to leave that. I'll go one and three quarters. I do want to leave it kind of big. One and three quarters. Because I'm going to be arching it. Let's move it up here. Ah, I better go one and a half. One and a half. There we go. All right. And then um, let's say that uh, Johnson... John Johnson, it wouldn't have an S on it, Johnson's, Johnson, yeah, we'll say, we'll call it Johnson. All right, and then let's go with a, um, oh my goodness, uh, let's be boring and go established, uh, 1944, you know just for kicks and giggles. All right, let's say we're gonna inlay all this. 
All right, for Johnson, I want to go ahead and give it a little bit of a curvature. Curvature. So let's pull that up a little bit. Move it down. I can pull it up a little bit more. And um, make sure that's centered. That looks more appropriate. And then as far as established, uh, we'll leave that straight. You know. Let's make sure it's centered, but though. Okay. So imagine that, that we were going to inlay all of this. Okay. Every bit of it. Now we could do the tree in uh, one type of uh, you know contrasting material then we could do uh, Johnson and established in another or we could just do it all in one piece of material uh, however we want to do it you know we can break it down we can do three male parts you know um, or we can do it all in one you know it doesn't have to be all of that now around the tree I would like uh, no we'll leave it at that all right so this is gonna be the female let's see here um, yep yep three different types of woods and things like that absolutely um, I'm gonna do it in one contrasting piece of wood, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna select all of this and we are going to make a copy of it to a new layer. We're gonna call this our female layer, or male, sorry, male, male layer. We're gonna give it a color of blue, and make it non-active right now. And we're going to call this one instead of tree, since it is the active one, that's what I'm drawing in. We'll just call this our female inlay. And we can have that active. And we'll turn that off for a minute, turn our male inlay on. Because we've got to do some work on the mail inlay. For the mail inlay, we need to mirror step number one, mirror the design. Okay. Do not create a mirror copy. Uh, we're going to flip it horizontal. And we're going to now surround it with a boundary. Typically, you would just use a rectangle. Now I'm going to offset that boundary off of my material a little bit, um, just a sixteenth of an inch, just so that I don't get any little frays on the end of the board, uh, you know, when it when it comes and you know carves this. All right, so now, right now as it stands, I could take my design my design and my border and I could create my fee or my mail cut point one and point one okay but I want to optimize this tool path a little bit and I want to create a, a second pocket cut and maybe one hopefully reduce some of the time machining time but number two save on my bit so Let's look at, at our machining areas. Well, number one on this design here, we're gonna offset, we're gonna offset these three items and we're gonna offset them separately. Uh, let me see what happens if I offset them together. Let's offset them outward my distance, I know I'm using my 60 degree V bit and I know my distance is 0.1155 that offset. So I'm going to use the same 0.12. Um, and I want to uh, 
offset that outward and let me see what happens there okay so that's good 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 and then from there that selected item um, I'm gonna take while it's selected and I'm going to right click and move it to its own layer and I'm gonna call that layer my uh, pocket boundary and I'll give this a color of red and I don't want it visible right this second okay because we're gonna be deleting some of the vectors and stuff from it you'll see in a minute um, and then uh, if I take my design again and I offset it twice that much which would be 0.24 okay and while that's selected I'm gonna rename that or not re I'm sorry I'm gonna re I'm gonna move that to a new layer and I'm gonna name that layer my V carve boundary And I'll give this a uh, color of teal or something and turn that off for a minute. All right, so let's think about what, uh, let's look at our vectors. Let's turn our uh, pocket boundary on right now. And so um, think about what we're doing here. We're, we're trying to mill all of this material away with a uh, end mill to reduce our machining time. And so we've got our boundary here. We've got this border. So it's if we select that border, it's going to mill all of that machine, all that away. We want this border as well. And this border. And that border. And excuse me for a moment. I got someone yelling in the background. I'm going to shut this window. got neighbors looking for dogs and yelling and screaming um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to machine and pocket between these parts here and reduce some of my milling time on this mill part right that's what our goal is and so let's go in and let's create our pocket toolpath we're going to cut, start at zero, cut down to 0.2, which is going to be our total depth of cut for the mill pocket. Uh, we can use our large diameter end mill, knowing now, knowing that if we do that, wherever that bit can't fit, um, it's not going to pocket out, which is fine. We'll, we can deal with that. Um, but let's go ahead and this is going to be called our roughing pocket. pocket <laughs> yes Wayne it is uh, uh, it won't be for long but though I'm going I'm going back up to the cold it's supposed to be snowing in Chantilly Virginia tonight I leave out tonight all right so we're going to now I got all this area right here right so let's get that in the mix too this guy and this guy uh, let's machine might as well machine all that out too as well um, We've got some of these little vectors that were created by that. Uh, you know that offset and that boundary We'll delete those we don't want those in um, And they're not going to be part of our selection this little stuff here in between the O's and all that my quarter inch bit is not going to fit in there So I'm not even going to bother with that All right, so I'm going to calculate this toolpath and so we can preview that selected toolpath. And again, guys, remember we're cutting the mail part. Okay, so if we look. Now, if we come in and let's turn on our um, 
Did I have the Baker? I had the wrong pocket. Hold on a second. Ah, 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 ah. Stand by. Let me turn the right on. I want to be closer. All right. So let me open that back up. All right. So. This will make sense in a minute. Um, that one, that one, and the outside stuff here. Okay, let me recalculate that. Oh, wait, I'm missing something. Missing something. What am I missing here? Stand by. I'm missing something. That boundary. Oh. I got, I bet you the other layers turned on. Stand by. Yep, it was selected too. Had me thrown for a loop there for a minute. I was wondering what in the world. Let me turn these vectors off. Just turning the layer visibility off did not, you know, um, did not deselect them. So, let me deselect. Okay, let me turn that off now. There we go. Alright, hold on a second. Something got moved. There we go. Lord of mercy, Lenny. I, 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 un, I hit the undo button and I undid a little bit too many times. Okay. Alright, back to... We're back to normal now. So let's... Uh, let's select on our outside boundary of the tree. The two inside vectors here. Uh, we're going to select on the outside letters. Uh, this red line. It's my pocket boundary it's the one that's closer closest sh should i say it's the one that's closest to my actual cut you know on the mail and let's calculate that roughing pocket we want to get that roughing pocket as close as possible uh where it can so let's uh preview that sorry i had the wrong vector selected before i had the wrong uh boundaries I even named them correctly, but I had them selected wrong. All right, so this is our cut. This is our roughing toolpath for the mail. Now, now we can come in and we're going to turn off that pocket boundary. Turn on the V-carve boundary. And for that... Uh, with the VCAR boundary on, we are going to select just the VCAR boundary and our design. The outside VCAR boundary and the design. Outside VCAR boundary and the design. Um, because when we do this VCAR toolpath, this is what we're going to be. We, we just want it to mill in these areas. There's no need to do all this area now because it's already done. So if I come into my Mel V carve, we're going to go with a 0.1 start depth, 
0.1 flat depth for a total cut of 0.2. If you add those two together, you get a total of 0.2. 60 degree V bit. I'm going to use my eighth inch end mill and I'm going to call this my mill inlay. Uh, I guess we I guess we can kind of classify it as a finish cut, right? And calculate. Oh, I forgot two vectors. Forgot more than two vectors. Let's go back in there and let's open that back up again. I didn't have this vector selected, this one, or that one. Now let's calculate her out. Okay. And so you see all the blue areas. Now these are the only areas that's going to be machined. You know, with that eighth inch bit and that V bit to create our mel part. So let's preview those tool paths. Okay, that's going to create our mel parts. And now if we come in and turn off the mail layer, turn off the V car boundary layer and turn on the female inlay layer, then and make it active. We can now select the female inlay and we're going to do a V-carve toolpath of a start depth of zero, the top of our board, to a cut depth of 0 0.15, 0 0.1 for the inlay depth, and 0 0.05 for glue space. 60 degree V-bit, eighth inch end mill. We're going to call this our female inlay pocket right female inlay pocket right and we'll calculate that reset our preview back to a blank board and preview that wrong one wrong one reset our preview and preview our visible tool paths Okay, this is going to be the female part. Hmm. It would make a nice looking inlay. Um, yeah, I, uh, uh, I might have uh, confused it when I forgot uh, a couple things. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this as a whole. So in our design side, okay, we've got our female, right? Straight up design, however you have it laid out. From there, a copy of that is created. And that copy is mirrored backwards. And then we surround that mirrored copy with a boundary, a border. Okay. If we were just doing the mail cut uh, with this whole thing right here just like it is bam bam um oops there's an extra vector there bear with me a second let me delete one of those all right so let's say that we were doing a straight on mail cut uh, no roughing, none of that stuff. We're just going to use our V-carve toolpath. Well, we would come in here with our V-carve toolpath. Zero being, or our start depth being 0.1. Our flat depth being 0.1. Using our bits. 60 degree and eighth inch. If we calculate this. If 
we reset the preview and you preview those visible toolpaths, we would have essentially our, you know, the mail part that we saw earlier. Well, let's look at something. Okay, so we have our mail part here. But let's look at it. Let's look at our time. By doing it that straight mail inlay, this way here, two hours and 54 minutes. Okay, two hours and 54 minutes to cut that mail inlay out. If we look at our rough cut and our mail part, in this case, two hours and 34 minutes. So we only saved uh, 20 minutes, you know. We only saved 20 minutes. Now, our mail inlay part is optimized right up to the letters. There's not a lot of machining area. You can see all the blue areas there, you know. So, um, our rough cut is the majority and it's a 44 minute cut by itself and then the mail inlay is you know an hour and 49 minutes so a total cut with the three would be two hours and 34 minutes well if we just went straight on with our you know pocket here we're at two hours and 54 minutes, so we only saved, as far as time, 20 minutes, right? Not much. Um, but the second part of that is we are able to control our depth of pass and we're reducing wear and tear on the tool. It wasn't an hour savings like last time, which was, you know, a wonderful savings. It's only 20 minutes but we can control our pass steps and uh, you know we're we're saving on our tool um, you know you might think that uh, you know what no it's uh, you know uh, here we're, 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 we're running uh, 20 minutes longer uh, but we're doing it all in one pass you know so we're still getting that effect. We're still getting that. It's not a much of a time saver on this one, but it's a tool saver. So you're still getting the benefit of by separating and creating those vectors. Now, as far as the female pocket, our female cut, look at about 55 minutes for a project, something like this. And again, this is 12 by 15 inches on the design. Press and fit those two parts together and uh, then mill or separate by cutting, you know, separating the two parts or mill it, you know, clamp it on your table and mill it, um, you know, however you want to do. Um, yeah, it saved the bit where, uh, let's see here. Um, David, did you uh, get your connection back? David Kinsey. Yeah, Leanne, I know the weather is awful up there. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to fly in. I leave tonight. Um, let's see here. Yep, maybe more snow. Five inches here today. Yes, Jimmy, that's what I heard that it was... I feel bad for Burl. He's driving over and he's picking me up at the airport. I'm flying in, so he's got to drive in it. Um, have a good night, everyone. Good night, Dennis. Uh, all right, you're welcome. Um, can you please make sure that you drop down menus on the layers show before you put it on Spindle TV? So on the layers... In the drop down menu uh, let's go ahead and clean up this layer for this project so there's nothing on layer one so we're gonna delete that 
There's nothing on the zero layer. We're going to delete that. There's nothing here on layer two. We're going to delete that. And so here's our layers. And let's look at this in a full on view versus the drop down menu. Let's go to our layer tab. And let's see if we can uh, pull our layer tab out on the screen here. All right, so for our layers, we've got our female layer. So let's, uh, you know, uh, pull this to the side. Now, let's see if my layers uh, tab, let's see if it shows it in the window. Bear with me a second. Let me know if, um, good night, Ron. Let me know if you, uh, if you all, if, if, okay. So it's not showing the layer tab in the, the drop down window. Uh, it's not showing on the screen, so it won't show that second window. So bear with me a second while I <coughs> sneeze. Holy camoly. Um, let me drop this back over here. Okay, let's see if it pops back on. Give it a second. Give it a second. Let's see if it pops back in. Stand by. Almost there. All right. Okay, so we got our female layer. Um, let's turn off our male. We got our female layer. That's got our regular normal design on it. We've got our male layer. Let's go ahead and move that up underneath the female. We've got our male layer here. The male layer is mirrored and then it has a boundary around it. We've got our, um, that's the lion's head. We don't need that in here right now. Let's delete that one. And the tulips, we don't need that right now. Let's delete that one. So we have basically four layers, female layer, the male layer, and then we have our boundary pocket or our pocket boundary, should I say, and our V carved boundary. So the if we were to turn on this male, the pocket boundary is the first offset being offset 0.12 from our design. It's the one that's closest to the design, 0.12. And that's what we're going to use for the pocket boundary. We're going to use that boundary and our very outside border. That's going to be the boundary. You know, all of this red, you know, um, all the outside and these inside one here and the two established. All the little inside stuff we don't need. As a matter of fact, we might as well make that layer active, which it is. And let's hold down our shift key and let's select everything. Hold down our shift key, turn off that boundary, turn off our tree, right? Our actual tree, turn off the outside borders and our numbers. Turn off the outside of the J. Let's turn off Johnson too. And the outside of the O, the outside of the H and N, the S, the O and the N. And then everything else. Oops, except for this one. Turn that one off too. Everything else that's on here can get deleted. Okay, those were just offsets that were created when we created that 0.12 offset. They don't need to be in there. We don't need them. All we care about are these outside borders that are 0.12 away from the outside of our design. Okay, and now the V carve boundary was offset from our design outward <coughs> twice the distance, 0.24. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting choked up. Let me grab something to drink here real quick. And this one is the, the boundary that's a little further out. Now, there are some, if I selected all of this, 
and I turned off once again my very outside boundaries and my actual design what I'm left with oops even these guys the big ones right here because those are big pocket areas that get cut out around that tree but everything else that's pink all these little guys here all this little stuff here we can just hit the delete key and delete that out we don't need that that's not it that's not you know part of our design but this further out boundary this is what we use with our you know our actual design when we're creating the mail inlay v carve okay that's why we call it our v carve boundary and what that does is if we look at the tool pass on that mail inlay um, that gives us this is our machining area we don't need to machine all this area out here we've done that with our you know outside pocket uh, and if I turn that V carve layer off and turn the pocket layer on and we look at that roughing pocket toolpath you know you can see that it's carving between the outside line and the inside of these or the outside of those lines inside of this line and outside of these it's carving all this white wood away so if I turn on oops solid view all the blue that's what's getting get milled away the all the blue is or purple whatever you want to call it that's what's getting milled away with the rough cut and then the finish cut of the mill that's all that we're milling so it's reducing our time by milling that little area now do I want to reduce the time further I could right remember I said that's a you know um, an hour and 49 minutes well I could get closer I could or you know I could I, instead of going so far out I don't need to really go that far out I could have went instead of 0.24 for the that that second offset I could have just went 0.15 just a little bit past um wait let me think about what I'm saying here I'm wrong I am wrong I'm on the wrong tool I'm talking I'm saying the right thing but I'm on the wrong toolpath uh, on that rough toolpath that 44 minutes if I wanted to I could have went in closer I could instead of being you know point two five away from the letters I could have been point one five um, you know because anything bigger than 0.12 is fine and so I could just by reducing you know yeah nah I don't want to confuse the situation by going in there just stick with that and you'll be <laughs> you know but um, I could have went further out basically and uh, I could have uh, machine less material and reduce that cut and all of that but there's no need for it and then so that's our two boundaries now for the female and our female cut you know all the inside of the design is what's getting milled away for the inside the, all the blue there so hopefully you'll take this um, yeah, William, you're right. I was 0.12, uh, and that's that's where I screw. I was about to screw myself up by uh, saying something that I didn't want to say. Um, 0.12 is my magic number. That's how far I wanted that uh, boundary to be away from my actual design, because at my cut depth of 0.2, that 0.115 offset distance is how that and by the way so you guys and girls know what that what that is what we're talking about the offset distance let me turn off those two tool paths okay at the very top of these vectors that's your uh the very top of this cut 
that's your vector outline. You know, like if I was looking at the tree. But at the bottom of this cut, that 60 degree angle, that V cut, there's an offset distance from this point to this point. And that, you know, let's see if we can find one that's closer. So from the top of this one to the bottom of this one, that offset distance here, um, that offset distance is a total of 0.1155. My boundary that I created from my design was out 0.12, which is a little further out. So I created a boundary to protect, you know, from my big end mill coming and cutting too close to my inlay uh, and things. So that's why we're using the 0.12. I rounded up higher than, as long as I'm higher than 0.1155, which is the offset distance, then I'm good. And once again, how did we get that offset distance? We drew a 60 degree V bit. with a line representing the top of our board. We then moved that line up, not size, moved it up on the Y axis, point two, representing the depth of cut. And then that offset distance here we took a measurement, a horizontal measurement from the point of the bit to that intersection of that offset and we got that 0.1155. That's how we got that number, how we got that, you know, and now that gave me a number to work from and so by offsetting 0.12, I've gone beyond this point and I know that I'm not going to be cutting into my inlay. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hopefully this helped uh, in some way kind of explain a, a little bit of the process. Um, I would like to see if you guys and girls ever created a, uh, you know, um, a project on when you when one board clamped on your table you're going to do the female pocket out of another contrasting piece of material you're going to do all the male cuts and then you're going to snap those two boards together separate them either by a bandsaw or a handsaw or by clamping those glued up two boards back on the table make sure that you uh, remember which is your bottom so you don't mill it off right we don't want to mill away the good part of the inlay um, you know, we don't want to accidentally glue the, you know, the, uh, top inlay that's getting milled away. We don't want to glue it to the tabletop and accidentally mill away our good piece of wood, right? Uh, so, um, but, uh, you can run a pocketing tool path and mill off that top surface and then don't get too close to it. Of course, you know, just bring it down. You're kind of milling away all that waste material and then use a random orbit sander, a drum sander or something to uh, finish it off, you know, or hand sander, whatever. You want to finish it off with sanding to get that nice flush inlay. Okay. Um, and uh, once you get one inlay under your belt, once you get one of these done, the numbers never change. Only the design, okay? The start depth and the cut depth for the female, which is 0 and 0.15. And the start depth and the cut depth for the male, which is 0.1 and 0.1, never changes. Now, they could change. You can do deeper and, and wider and things like that, you know, but there's no need for it to change, you know. Uh, the angle of the V-bit is going to play a big role on that, but with a 60-degree V-bit, these are the numbers. And, um, you know, I think even with a 90, you could get away with this uh, and stuff, and it'd be still a decent uh, inlay. It wouldn't be too shallow and stuff. But... Once you get this uh, one of these done, every single V carve inlay is the same. Okay. All right. Um, 
Yep. And, uh, yep, congratulations, William, everybody. Uh, William is, uh, 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 this is uh, William uh, Edlin, and uh, he's a new owner. So welcome, William. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, definitely anxious to get started. I, I, I'm sure you are. Um, but uh, uh, William um, uh, bought his machine in Atlanta a couple days ago. So just got started. And uh, so make sure y'all welcome him. Uh, he's in the group as well, the Digital Wood Carver Owners Group. I think we got him in there the other night. I think we did, William. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, um, Bill. Uh, but um, if we did, you guys give him a warm welcome. And as well as any of our other new people that are with us tonight, uh, welcome to you all. And um, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have got to, it's 10 o'clock. I've got to go. Uh, Cause I literally have to pack and get ready to get on a plane in an hour or two. Um, so and I still got to drive to the airport. <laughs> so um, uh, and it takes an hour to get there. Uh, but anyway, hour and a half, hour and a half, hour and a half to get there. But um, y'all have a uh, great evening. Hopefully, this was something that you can use. I'm gonna go ahead and post the three, the four DXF files in the Facebook group: the lion, the tulips, the trout, and the tree. I will post them right now in the Digital Woodcarver Facebook group, uh, and I hope to see one of these as an inlay in one of your projects one day, uh, and uh, see how it goes. All right. Guys and girls, have a great night. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's um, let's at least end with a preview picture of uh, the female, at least. All right? We'll get the female in here. There we go. And let's give the female a little bit of color just to see what she would look like if she was in a purple trans. All right. So, all in all, pretty nice looking little design there with the tree. Yeah, uh, be a little bit more creative than I was with the Johnson and all, you know, tree of life. I'm sure there's some kind of quote out there about trees and roots and family and uh, all of that stuff. Um,. Until next time, y'all have a great night. Uh, Jared, was it a text message or a voicemail message or, or an email message? Jared <laughs> Ripperda. Text. Email or phone message. And Carlos, are you still in the group? If Carlos, if you're still in the group, uh, oh, Jared, um, hold on a second. Let me, uh, If you called uh, Friday, then yes, you might have spoken to my assistant, and she gave me all the messages. Oh, yes, you're Jared. Okay, you're the one with the quarter. Uh, Jared, give me a call uh, after the class. As soon as I say goodbye, when this class ends, give me a call. Yes, I can do that. I can do that model for you. Um, and... Um, yeah, let's discuss that. That way I can work on it this weekend. Um, so definitely give me a call here in about, uh, give me about 10 minutes and then give me a call. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, want to make sure that I did not miss any questions. If I did, I will come back and uh, comb through. Uh, hopefully I didn't. If I did, post them in the comment section of the video on the Facebook group and I will answer them in the comment section so everybody can see. Um,
Okay. Uh, Jared, call me in 10 minutes. You guys and girls, I said it 100 times. I'll say it again. Until you next time, I'll see you soon. Bye now.